Oh boy, we start a new month today, July 1st. How does that feel, John McKay? Weird. <laughs> it does? Oh, yeah, it feels good to me. I love it. Almost halfway through summer. Oh, don't say that. I love summer. That's my favorite season here in the Tri-Cities. Um, before we get going on today's show, which will just let me say our studio right now is packed. We had to bring in extra chairs. We're not used to all this, but it's fabulous. Yesterday, we were live on location out, uh, did a Hanford tour all yesterday morning and then able to talk about it at noon. Oh boy, my advice to any of you that are within listening distance, if you have an opportunity to take a Hanford tour, do it. There's so much fascinating history that is alive out there and the people here have done such a fabulous job of preserving it, keeping it. We have a national park now. I mean, it's it's a, it's a great thing. Did you get to see the end reactor? Yeah, we we drove by end reactor because you know end reactor is now cocooned. Yeah. Um, so there's a big shield. <laughs> all all it's all closed up. Yeah, cause um, that's where my dad worked, and he used ah, to tell me, see? well, he would jokingly say, "I can tell you what I do, but then I'd have to make you disappear." <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah, yes, a lot there. of he worked there secrecy. In the 60s and 70s, when he was the bomb and the electricity. <clears throat> a very, very interesting uh, history that's now sort of uh, finally kind of opening up. All right, so take a tour if you can. Today, what are we going to talk about? We're going to talk about drugs and its effect on our society. Um, and their, mm, ugh, their hard stories. Some very, very difficult stories. We're going to start out today. My first guest is Jennifer Dorsett. Jennifer, thank you so much for being here today. Really appreciate it. You told me that you live in Pasco but work in Prosser, and tell me who you work for. I am subcontracted through the Department of Social and Health Services for Benton and Franklin Counties, and they receive funds from the Department of Behavioral Health and Recovery. Uh, we're one of over 50 communities that have been chosen uh, for, you know, targeted uh, substance abuse reduction within the communities. So you're working in Prosser to reduce uh, drug and alcohol use of teenagers. That's right, or all all youth. All youth. youth. Yeah. All youth. Okay. Um, now I know that the I, I've been to the website, which is a really excellent website. Let's go ahead and tell people what that is right now, because uh, people. If, you, if this is an issue at all close to you, you must visit this website. What is it? It's starttalkingnow.org. Simple, <laughs> starttalkingnow.org. Okay, really, really good information. On the website, I learn that parents uh, have the greatest influence on their children when it comes to children's decisions about using drug or alcohol. Really? Yes, completely, 100% true. Okay, that surprises me because we've all heard that it's friends. Well, <clears throat> parents are, you know, constant. They're there at the beginning, they're there through your life, they're there at the end. And, you know, when we survey kids, which we do around the state and around the nation, they say parents are their number one influence. They're the ones who influence their choices the most. Kids don't want to disappoint their parents, and so they want to do what their parents think is right. And so it's really important to start having conversations early and often. I want you to pull that microphone closer to you because I want to hear what you have to say. And, um, uh, <clears throat> all right, so parents have the greatest influence. Well, uh, I guess my first question to you about that then would be, when does it start? Do I start talking about drugs or uh, related kinds of topics when a child is one or two, or do I wait until they're 13? Well, what we really want to keep the message strong about is you want to teach them about all healthy behaviors, you know, at an early age. Um, but a great kind of guideline to go by is, you know, 9, 10, 11, those are the ages where we're starting to see, you know, kids get into problem behaviors, hanging out with, you know, kids that are using or where they have questions about using. And so it's important to get, get to your kids, you know, before that starts happening. So nine, nine years old is a great age to start, start doing that. And, you know, if they're asking questions before that, you know, you can still give them good, honest answers that are simple for them to understand. Mm -hmm. Well, I know one of the, one of the biggest uh, questions might be, um, mom or dad, did you use drugs? So how do you answer that? Uh, you know, honesty is the best policy. You don't want your kids to find out you lied to them later on. Um, you know, be honest, but don't glorify your use. You know, simple, yes, I did. Um, and then also, you know, if there were consequences to that that you saw for yourself or for others, you know, sharing those right away is really important. 
Um, and then if you don't have any specific consequences that you're aware of, you share your hopes and your dreams for your kids, you know, in tagline with that. So, you know, yeah, I did, but gosh, I wish you wouldn't because, you know, I wish I had waited until I was uh, old enough and, and, you know, didn't break the law, you know, stuff like that. So just being open and honest with your kids, but also, you know, having a message in there that they can carry with them. Gosh, you know, my mom used when she was 16, but she really wished she hadn't because she had this bad experience or she knows someone who had a bad experience um, and she was breaking the law and didn't want to do that. And so just having that in their mind, you know, later on in their life, they carry it with them. It's like bubble wrap we put around our kids. You know, we give them all this information and we send them out into the world and we just hope, you know, that they'll retain it and they'll use it. So. Hmm. We ha and they're sponges and we don't even realize that, mm -hmm. do we? Yeah, yeah, they're picking up information all the time. Hey, let me give you that phone number again if you want to call. Uh, maybe you've got a situation that you're looking for a little bit of advice about. The number is 547-8726. Uh, Jennifer Dorsett, okay, what if, uh, you know, your, your children don't ask you any questions? Um, should you talk to them first? Absolutely. Um, if you're, you know, thinking, gosh, they're getting to be that age, you know, I want to make sure they have information before they go out into the world and have to, you know, make hard choices. Um, just having that dialogue with them, asking them questions. Um, it's really about family bonding, you know, creating the dialogue with your kids so that when they are approached about something, they can feel open to come and talk to you about it. Um, but just having basic conversations with them, like, hey, you know, I heard this happened in the news. You know, do you have any questions about that? Um, you know, the, the laws have changed a lot in our state around alcohol and marijuana the last couple of years with privatization and, you know, I-502. And so your kids hear the news and they hear people talking about the news and talking about the changes. So you talking about them too and just making sure they get the information you want them to have is so important. Mm -hmm. Okay, so what is a, um, a common kind of response that a parent can give a child? Or uh, let's, let's say that you discover that your child is using drugs. They're smoking marijuana. Um, how do you approach that? Uh, you know, I think it's different for every parent, um, just depending on how close you are with your kids and, you know, how much they trust you. And, and sometimes bringing in a professional is something, you know, that's strongly recommended if your child is getting into drug use, just so that you have that perspective, that outside perspective of, you know, you know, maybe it's worse than it is or maybe it's just new. And so, you know, you can get, get connected with a professional early. Um, but if you just want to have, you know, the conversation, maybe you think your kid's using or you know your kid's friends are using, you know, again, asking those questions, you know, non-threatening manner, you know, I am I'm worried about you, you know, are you using drugs? Um, and, you know, if they say yes, you know, kind of going from there, you know, why are you using drugs? And are you, you know, aware of the consequences? Or I'm concerned for you, you know, I, I don't want you to be using drugs. You know, just being plain with your kids and having that open dialogue is just essential, you know, to making sure that they don't develop a problem. On this website that is, again, what's the name of it? StartTalkingNow.org. StartTalkingNow.org. There's a whole list of questions that children might ask, and you're literally given the words that can come right out of your mouth to them. So one of these questions is, some kids at school drink or use marijuana. They seem fine. What's the big deal? So uh, just a common answer for this. I mean, again, everything should be individualized to your family, but a common answer, like one that might be even available on this website is, you know, they might seem fine, but you don't know what's happening within their body. And our brains develop well into our 20s. And so, you know, those major things that are occurring, you know, around development, um, you know, memory, uh, decision making, those are the, the parts that are developed fully last. And so marijuana, alcohol, other drugs, they all affect those parts of the brain. And so it's important to know that those effects, though you may not see them right away, you know, happen over long periods of time. And so any drug or alcohol use that you have does have an effect on your body. Mm -hmm. Well, I think um, it becomes even more difficult, I think, for parents. They need to have the, the right preparation and how to respond to this when states legalize marijuana. Now, certainly that's happened in the state of Washington also our neighboring state in Oregon. So what if a child says, well, it's legal now, what's the big deal? 
So a very simple response to this would be it's legal for adults to use marijuana and not youth for very specific reasons of brain development. Um, but also, you know, there's consequences to using and, you know, going through what those could be. Um, another thing that I know, you know, we're all really trying to stress is about uh, driving under the influence and, you know, the impacts that that can have. Even as adults, we don't want people driving or drinking under the influence of drugs. So, um, you know, just having that dialogue, again, about consequences and, you know, yes, it's legal for adults who are not an adult yet. And so I would like for you to wait until you're an adult to make those choices when your brain is ready. All right, so all of this is really good advice for parents. And I guess one of the most important things that I am seeing through all of this is that if you're not having conversations, really close bonding conversations with your children when they are really young, it's going to be extremely difficult when they're 16. <laughs> Yes, students who use under the age of 14 or 15, they're four times more likely to have a substance abuse addiction issue later on in life. And so when we're looking at, you know, talking to your kids early and often, it's so we can help prevent those things from happening. Um, if your kids wait until they're 21, they're much less likely to develop an addiction issue. Mm -hmm. so. All right, so Jennifer, what else, what is uh, when you talk to, and you do parenting classes, don't you? Or you offer parenting help? Yeah, yeah, we offer, most of the coalitions around the state offer a parenting program. We do Guiding Good Choices, which is an amazing program. And it's all about just strengthening the bonds between your family. Um, you know, getting to know your kids and having them know you and your boundaries and, you know, setting them up to succeed in life. Um, the parenting program's great, and anybody who can attend, I would definitely recommend it, Guiding Good Choices. So. Guide and good choices or guiding? Guiding good choices. Guiding good choices, okay. You know, it's really sad to me that we have to take a course to uh, get a boat license. <laughs> and we have to take a course now to get a driver's license and we have to pass a test, but we don't do anything to have a child. I've really changed my mind about this. <laughs> the more I see what's going on, the more I really believe that a parenting class should be a complete requirement for parenthood. That's what I think. I totally personally agree with you. <laughs> <laughs> well, most people yeah, wouldn't. Uh, this, 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 this idea that uh, this child is mine and it's uh, possession and I can do whatever I want with it is just crazy talk. Anyway, um, so that's not going to happen today. So what we want to do is try to lovingly encourage people who are parents to uh, find good ways to talk to their children. Yes, and a lot of that is just around bonding. Um, on average, you know, a parent spends 15 minutes a day having meaningful conversation with their kids, and of those 15 minutes, 12 of them are in direct commands. And so when you're really talking about having a meaningful conversation with your kids, like, ask them how their day was, specifics, you know, like, oh, you enjoyed math today. What about math did you enjoy? What did you learn today? You know, how is your friend Joey? And, you know, let's do a play date together. And, you know, just having those bonds, game nights, dinner time. Um, you know, doing things with your kids is so important, especially now, you know, a lot of parents work, both parents work, and so you get less and less time with your kids at home, less and less family bonding, and, uh, you know, that just gives them the opportunity to bond with others, you know, maybe people that, that don't make great decisions, maybe parents of friends who are around, maybe parents of friends who provide alcohol at their home. It's important to know people, um, you know, that your kids are associated with as well, because you can talk about that and have those conversations yes. with your parents. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, Joey's friends might let him drink at home, but we don't allow that, and you cannot go over there when, when Joey is doing that. You know, just having those conversations, making the boundaries specific, and uh, giving the kids the skills they need to, to succeed. All right. Jennifer Dorsett, thank you so much. <coughs> Again, that really important uh, website is starttalkingnow.org, O-R-G. Uh, good luck in your efforts, and I wish you the best. Thank you, Jennifer. Thank you.